Tibial plateau fractures. Anatomy. The lateral tibial plateau is convex in shape and it is proximal to the medial tibial plateau. The medial tibial plateau is concave in shape and distal to the lateral tibial plateau. If you put screws from the lateral side to the medial side, you can penetrate the joint medially because the medial tibial plateau is concave and distal. 50% of tibial plateau fractures are associated with soft tissue injuries, such as meniscal injury. The lateral meniscus tear is more than the medial meniscal tears. Here there is an example of the meniscal injuries with plateau fractures. The medial collateral ligament injury, the anterior cruciate ligament injury and compartment syndrome. The lateral meniscal tears occur more with Chaska type 2, which is split depressed. The medial meniscal tears occur with Chaskar type 4, which is the medial plateau fracture. You should know about Chaskar classification. Type 1, pure cleavage fracture of the lateral tibial plateau. The treatment, regular buttress plate. It prevents collapse and shear forces. Type 2, cleavage fracture of the lateral tibial plateau with articular surface depression. The lateral meniscal tear is associated with this type of fracture. Joint depression greater than 6 mm and widening of greater than 5 mm was associated with lateral meniscal injury in over 80% of the cases. Treatment Elevate the fracture, fill the gap, and add a plate. You can fill the gap with calcium phosphate. It has a high compressive strength. The calcium phosphate have the least amount of articular subsidence on follow-up examinations. It is better than autograft, especially at 12 months, as it relates to subsidence. The calcium phosphate shows better x-rays, and it allows the patient to have an earlier weight bearing. Calcium phosphate is not a tricalcium phosphate. Tricalcium phosphate has less compressive strength. Type 3 pure central depression fracture of the lateral tibial plateau with an intact osseous rim. It's just a depression fracture that usually happens in the older population. And the treatment is elevate the fracture, fill the gap, add a plate, and you can add the calcium phosphate cement, which has a high compressive strength. A balloon may be used to help in elevating the depressed fragment and filling the gap with calcium phosphate cement. Type 4 is the most important type. It is a split or depression fracture of the medial tibial plateau possible vascular injury, and medial meniscal tears. The fracture produces temporary dislocation of the knee with possible popliteal artery injury. Frequent neurovascular checks, ankle brachial index, and arteriography may be needed. Please note that when the fracture line extends beyond the medial eminence, it is associated with more complications such as compartment syndrome. Treatment is surgical repair for all of them. All of them need surgical repair. 
the ankle brachial index for vascular complication or anticipated one. You probably need to do it in all type 4 tibial plateau fractures. Vascular complication should be avoided by assessing the patient by the ankle brachial index. I will question the value of uh, screws alone in this fracture because it, the fixation will be less rigid than the plate. I think anti-glide plate or buttress plate is probably the ideal treatment for this type of fracture. Type 5 is the bicondylar with intact metaphysis and diaphysis. The treatment is surgical repair or temporary external fixture followed by surgical repair by internal fixation technique when the soft tissue permits. So expanding external fixture may be helpful here. Type 6 is unicondylar or bicondylar tibial plateau fracture with metaphyseal diaphyseal dissociation. There is a dissociation. Treatment start with expanding external fixture, followed by internal fixation, usually minimal internal fixation, when the soft tissue condition permits. And if you're going to fix both sides, the medial and lateral, you will need to use medial and lateral plate fixation through two approaches. The frequency is the lateral followed by the bicondylar followed by the medial. Physical examination. Examine the neurovascular status of the patient. Examination for compartment syndrome. If varus and valgus test demonstrate laxity of more than 10 degrees, this indicates instability and it requires surgery. This is an important in the board exam. Neurovascular examination, any difference in pulse exam between extremities should be further investigated with the ABI. Imaging, obtain plateau view, which is 10 degree caudal tilt. An important finding is the posterior medial fracture line that must be recognized. You must recognize this fragment because you're going to fix it. CT scan is the study of choice because it shows you how many fragments and the location of the fragments. The MRI is useful to determine if any meniscal and ligamentous pathology, basically the soft tissue structures that are injured, but you don't do that acutely except in rare situations. The posterior medial fracture must be recognized. If you see it, fix it. Do two separate incisions and fix it with a lateral plate through lateral approach and posterior medial plate through an incision, a separate one, which is between the semimembranosus and the medial head of the gastrocnemius which is the Baker cyst location. This is the anatomical location of the fragment. This is the approach between the semimembranosus and the medial gastroc. And this is the plate fixation posterior medially through that incision. You need to know a little bit about the biologic. The sulfate will disappear first and will create a lot of serious drainage. The phosphate is the highest compression strength, better than cancellous bone. The hydroxyabitate disappears last. Surgery. The aim of surgery is to restore the joint stability and alignment and provide stable fixation and achieve early return of range of motion. Early range of motion helps to maintain the cartilage. Buttress plates are used in unicondylar fractures. Logged plates are used more frequently in bicondylar fractures and in the elderly. Superficial and deep perineal nerve injury may occur 
with percutaneous, placed, long lateral, submuscular, locked plates. In external fixation, keep the wire more than 14 mm away from the joint. A spanning external fixation is used in ligamentous injury, bicondylar fracture with shortening, soft tissue injury, polytrauma, comminution. The outcome of surgery depends on restoring adequate stability and mechanical alignment. All Chasker type 4 should be fixed surgically. It means the medial plateau fractures should be fixed surgically. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this review. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.